Hello YouTube, hello Twitch, I hope you're all doing well and thank you for tuning in to this video. We're gonna go over on cruiser skills right now. Which one you can take, which one you can skip. Um, if there's skills you can completely skip. That you should take on no cruisers or specific cases. We'll judge this here on this video right now. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the YouTube channel. It would really help me out a ton. Um, we're trying to grow quite a lot right now on YouTube and we're starting to do more stuff like guides and so on. Also, if you have some wishes, please write in the comments below the video what you want to see. If you want to see a specific ship, if you want to see something... If you want to have a talk about a specific topic in World of Warships and let's get started. We start with Breeze of Gears. Easy. It's an easy way to decide if you take this or not. Does you does does your cruiser have good turret to start to start with or not? If it has really good turret to risk, like Minotaur, um, Smolensk, I wouldn't think right now. Which ones also have good turret to risk? Like all the light cruisers, most likely Wooster, Austin. It's a straight up skip. You reach, you usually you usually want to take these things on ships with on cruisers with very slow turret traverse. Um, such as, I think the Moin has very slow tour traverse, if I'm not wrong. Um, but even there you don't need it necessarily. But basically, you want to take it on ships where you feel really, very uncomfortable because of slow tour traverse. Every, tur every DD, um, cruiser, especially light cruisers who has fast tour traverse, is a straight up skip. You don't need it. So, depending on how good the tour traverse of the ship is. Which means you should always check it. Don't skill it before you haven't tested it in actual battle. Because, obviously, in a training room, for example, if you buy a minor tour and you don't look at the skill uh, stats and you put this on, it would be a waste of points. <laughs> Next one, we have torpedo speed and aerial torpedo speed. Straight up skip for every cruiser that has no torpedoes to start with should be clear. Honestly, even with most cruisers that have torpedoes, it's a skip for me. The only, the only ship where I could see it important when it comes to high tier cruisers might be Yodo or Kitakami. Why Yodo? Because Yodo's concealment on torpedoes is so dark that you need to somewhat get them faster so they reach the target. And Kitakami, obviously, it's the torpedo boat of tier 10. Other than that, Clear skip, most other torpedoes are perfectly fine in the game. It's just the Japanese ones who are kind of like suffering due to spotting. Uh, Jinan, you don't need to skill it on Jinan either, to be honest. Torps are fast enough and they are super stealthy. It's not a must-have. It's not a must-have on Jinan, in all honesty. This is only for torpedoes which are kind of bad that they need to get... Like, the thing is, Yoro in general is a very bad ship, but... You still kind of want to hit with the torps because of the insane damage, so you need to make them somehow better. Moving on. Preparation time for consumable reload. Just like with we had with the battleship video, um, that you will also see on the YouTube channel. More consumables, the more worth it. If you have a ship that has no important consumables, or barely any, not really worth taking it. If it has, like, radar ships, for example, get a very nice boost from it because they have radar, hydro, and spotter plane usually, or radar, hydro, def A, whatever. So, there's something to think about. But in general, ships with very low amount of consumables, it's a skip. Gun feeder. Gun feeder is a thing I would take on a lot of cruisers. Personally, where I like to switch fast the ammo. Des Moines, Marseille, PR, stuff like this. Stuff with relatively, I mean Des Moines is an exception, it does have fast reload, but ships with relatively long reload on cruisers, it's not a bad pick. Um, stuff like Minotaur, which have only AP, you don't take it. I think the game even warns you, if I'm not wrong. I hope it does warn you. Okay, that's warn you. It shows you literally you should not use the skill. Good. Um, so yeah, basically the longer the reload, the more worth it. With ships with super short reload, we're talking about I would say four second ish booster, small lens, and so on. You can put it on, but you don't need it necessarily. 
Incoming fire alert, just like battleships, is straight up. Is straight up? Gone. Not worth it. If you're in a cruiser, you are spotted, you see people in front of you, you should expect shells coming your way anyway, and you usually see them coming. <laughs> last stands. Now last stand is a thing. There's certain cruisers where I do like having last stand, act uh, last stand on. Mainly ships where you want to maneuver a lot and it's very important to stay kind of in the move, such as stuff like uh, such as stuff like Henry, for example. I do like last stand because you will lose if you get hit your engine quite often. On more stationary or more like aggressive ships, such or not aggressive, but like like let's call them be more beefier ships like Pedro, Stalingrad, Napoli, and so on. You don't really need it. You you don't really need last stand. Uh, it's more like for the ships that either need to move a lot on the battlefield or that generally generally kind of have something yeah have have a bonus from it but again from ships like Stalingrad, Petro, Napoli uh, let me take another example what's Golden Lion, Castilla, I mean Castilla you could put it on but Golden Lion what else do we have here? You don't need it on the Severus either because of the smoke. Like these ships, you don't really need it. Uh, however, on something like a Henry, uh, in the Castilla, it can work very well where you constantly want to move and duke shells. And if you really use your, lose your engine, it's nice to have. Other than that, you can skip it on most ships. Now we're going to move on to Demolition Expert. Demolition Expert is a skill that also comes at a price the more damage output you can do on a minute like the more let's say a cheese spam you have the more worth it is this is for example a very good pick for Colbert and Smolensk and Wooster however this is not really a good pick for Stalingrad for example so basically the faster you shoot, the more you rely on a G and the more you spam, the better it gets. And unlike on battleships where it's completely useless, you can use it on super high HG DPM cruisers. Till the torpedo tubes, again, the only real ships where I would take that is Kitakami and Yodo. The rest is not worth it and you can literally skip it. Not, not worth it. Although I have one question. No, this is torpedo tubes. This doesn't count for planes. Never mind. Otherwise, Hildebrand. <laughs> Consumable enchantment. A big yes to any radar ship. A big yes to any ship where you can increase the radar duration. Every Russian ship, every Russian radar, every American radar, pretty much British raiders, a must have. You can you can get so much out of it, especially with the American and the. British Raiders, you will actually get quite a big, quite a big portion. I think, I think my Mirada Minu has 52.8 seconds. It might be a bit more or less, I'm not sure right now. But basically, with 10%, that's 5.2 seconds of additional radar time. That is a long time. Same as the Des Moines, I think it has like 50-ish something if you built into it. So that's a long time and you definitely get worth out of, it, out of it. It's also great for ships such as Severus, where you have longer smoke action time. Um, so basically, more consumables or radar, one of the best things to pick. Eye in the sky. Personally, I only run it on one ship. Oh, I did run it back in the day on one ship. And that was Hindenburg. <laughs> I, don't have an, Hello? I don't have any other ship where I ran it. And sim the simple fact I run it on Hindenburg because Hindenburg is rather squishy and has not the maneuverability of a Henry or a Castilla. So it's sometimes very hard to like dodge the incoming high caliber BBs. And I tend to run my Hindenburg with main gun reload. But I use Eye of the Sky to get the, to get the fast spotter plane cooldown. But basically, it's not really a needed skill otherwise. Ven as well. Venezia. Uh, Venezia could also work, yeah. I could also see it working there. Um, but for me, personally, I only use it on Hindenburg. So... You can also use it on stuff like Zao. 
Oh, you see, no, that's true. Basically, all ships that are not as maneuverable as Handy and Castilla, which don't really rely on it, um, which are still squishy but nowhere near as maneuverable, stuff like this. Um, I do feel like Castilla has enough speed though to dodge most shells. But anyway, it's it's not a must-have. You can use it on certain ships. Obviously, only ships with spotter planes, but that should be self-explanatory. Moving on to priority target. I don't think I need to say it. It's one of my favorite skills. It's a pick on every ship I have, on every cruiser I have. It's always good to know how many battleships player want to see you death. <laughs> because usually that number you see is always battleships. <laughs> no, uh, jokes aside. It's just a great skill to have. I explained it already just like with the BBs. It gives you so much more utility. You can judge when DDs launch torpedoes at you due to the indicator going up and down. Uh, you see how many people are actually targeting right now. It gives you a whole overview. Um, it's a must have for me. I know there's people who don't run it and that's fine if it works for you. I just It gives me so much information. It kind of makes me relax in a lot of ways. Um, I love the skill. Dave, you don't need to, it's fine. Like, again, if you don't run it, that's up to you. I think it's a very, very strong skill. Focus fire training. There's, there's two ships, two ship types where would take it. No cruiser should take it besides Dutch cruisers, because you get 10% faster aircraft preparation time, airstrike, 15% airstrike reload time, or hybrids. Hildebrandt, and right now, I, if I think about the 10 cruisers, only Hildebrandt and Golden Lion should take it. Because Golden Lion gets faster airstrikes, like the bomb, carpet bombs, and Hildebrandt gets faster torpedo and, uh, what is the other thing called? Bomb, bomber planes, dive bomber planes. <coughs> other than that, I would not take it on any other cruiser right now. Oh, Commissar, Commissar. I don't think I missed any hybrid cruiser or bombing cruiser. No, I don't think so. Kearsarge. Kearsarge is a battleship. The seven Provincian. Yeah, I'm just going 4010 right now in general. But this speaks for everything. If you have a Dutch cruiser, it's a very good skill. If you have a hybrid ship, it's a very good skill. For all the other cruisers, it's kind of unnecessary. Moving over to heavy HG and SEP damage. Simple rule for me. Every light cruiser that has lower caliber guns, like 149 at States, it's a must pick. You get such a big damage buff for Colbert and Smolensk. Or any lighthouse ish built ways. For example, Henry or Lighthouse Venezia. You can take it because obviously it makes your concealment worse, but you want that with lighthouse builds and it gives you also a nice damage buff. Other than that, it's pretty much skippable on most cruisers. Pack a punch, torpedo damage, secondary battery range. I would take it for on Yodo for better torpedo damage and I would take it on stuff like no, no, Napoli for better secondary battery firing range. Other than that, Pretty much skippable on most cruisers as well. You could you can technically take it also on Jinan because of the torpedo spam. But you know, all honesty, you throw out so many torpedoes with Jinan, it's already strong enough. You can also take it on Kitakami, by the way. That's also pretty good. AR, just like in my battleship captain video, it's probably the best skill in the game. You take it on every ship. Every ship. No, no doubts here. That's the safety points. Heavy AP shells. I feel like if this would be two points or one point, it would be kind of a way to go for it. But I don't think it's really worth it for three points. I don't think it's worth it. It's, it's too expensive. It's not even necessarily bad, but it's too expensive. So definitely skippable. Superintendent. Must have pretty much on most cruisers. It's nice to have more consumables, more raiders, more hydros, more heals. Um, pretty much run it also all on, on all of my cruisers, unless they have ridiculous amount of consumables to start with. 
survivability experts um you can take it actually on the fair few cruisers but again it it's like if you don't really know what to skill else on lighter cruisers you can take it to buff the survivability but on something on like a stalingrad or moskva and so on you sh there's no point in taking it you don't take it top grade gunner increases the main battery reload speed while enemies is within your standard dictability range this is the most important skill for any ship that you can rather play aggressive or you have enemies in the concealment or lighthouse builds. This is a skill important for s s ships like Henry, Castille, uh, Henry, um, Venezia, Stalingrad, pretty much all these ships who either are built into lighthouse or can be played extremely aggressive. Napoli, very good top grade gunner, Des Moines, really good top grade gunner. Um, all these ships, you're kind of in the action, in a way. Sure, Des Moines might be might be behind an island, but it doesn't mean that like that the people are still in your standard dictability um, circle. So, a really, really, really strong ship, a uh, really, really strong pick, and it's nice to have that eight percent reload buff. Outnumbered. Some people said they run it and ranked with Napoli, but in all on it or CBs or whatever, but I'm not gonna go into it too much. I think it's too it's it's a niche product as Ruby just wrote in chat. I think it's skippable. It's it's four points, it's too much. Um some people said they run it with a lighthouse build, but I don't see it working necessarily because if you're in a Henry and you're on one flank, you need to guarantee that you're in a position where you have less teammates than enemies in. And that's not always the case. You don't even know if you're on the flank at the beginning where there might be more or less enemies because you don't know at the beginning. So, definitely skippable for me. RPF. That's an interesting skill. After the skill is mastered, the player will have the direction to the nearest enemy ship indicated to them. The enemy player will be alerted that Bering was taking on their ship. I have right now one ship where I run it. One single ship, I think I run RPF. And that's it. Radar Minotaur. Why do I run it on a Radar Minotaur? My Radar Minotaur has 9 cam concealment. And my Radar is 10 cam concealment. That means I have 1 kilometer of playing ground with my Radar Mino. To make my life even easier, and this is just like a quality of life improvement, I use it on my Minotaur to even even more be on the sure side to know where the enemy DD is because it will obviously show me the closest target and I know then oh he's to my right flank I go there I'm spotted I press the radar button and I delete him it's just a quality of life improvement you could play radar minotaur without it uh, I just like to have it because for me it's a guarantee guaranteed way to just completely annihilate the enemy DD player um, Hello there. Other than that, you don't really need it on most cruisers, so it's also highly skip skippable. Um, there might be some place where I, which I don't really have in my head right now, where you could use it effectively. But I just love it in a combination with the Stealth ride Radar or Minotaur, that's why I take it there. Other than that, again, not really necessary. Like for example, if you put it on a Moskva to use your Radar, it's not really gonna work so well. Simply for the fact because your concealment is so much bigger than your Radar. That would be, for example, a pretty big waste. And you can usually judge yourself when an opponent might be in your actual radar range. So, St. Martin. St. Martin, St. Martin also works, that's true, because the concealment to radar range is pretty close. Inertia Fuse, also Brisbane, by the way. I forgot. Inertia Fuse, so basically IFHG. Where would you take IFHG nowadays? I mean, in honesty, the only ships where I see it is if you have 150mm guns um, and you want a Pen32, but the problem nowadays with it is that, first of all, you butcher your fire chat. Wait. A chance of- oh, I thought- uh, guys, I thought the debuff actually is gone. I thought the debuff of 50% fire chance is gone, but it's just written instead of showing. Okay. Uh, basically... <laughs> basically... Yeah. The, f the thing is, back in the day, you took it on 
a Wooster, for example, because the debuff wasn't so brutal, and you had a lot of battleships that had 32 mm armor. But now, even if you even if you go be beyond that threshold, it's not gonna help you that much anymore because a lot of the newer ships have 40 mm of middle armor and plus a lot of BBs at least. I think Pira I think for example, Libertad has what 50 mm of armor in the middle section of the ship. Um, so you can run it, but. First of all, I would only run it, if at all, on 150mm cruisers, if at all, because other cruisers are just getting butchered too hard by it. Um, but it's super expensive and you lose half of your fire chance, which is very brutal. So you can skip it on most ships as well. And obviously on AP only ships, you shouldn't skill it. Concealment Expert, just like with battleships, one of the most important skills, you take it on every cruiser unless you are willing to build a lighthouse build on a Henry, for example. Then you, of course, don't take it. But on every other cruiser that is not lighthouse related, you have to take concealment. It's a very, very strong ship build. Now, I've mentioned the word lighthouse probably six times during this video. And some of you might not even know what it is. Basically, a lighthouse build means you're making your concealment as shit as you can, so you're constantly spotted. The idea behind it is that you buff your DPM immensely by it, for example with top grade gunner. Basically when your Henry has 20k concealment and he's always spotted, he will always have that 8% reload buff. That's the idea behind a high lighthouse build. You give up concealment completely in order for, D, uh, for higher DPM. So, yeah, that's a lighthouse build, um, pretty quickly explained. And that's why you take all the skills that make your concealment worse for extra damage or reload. Last but not least, we have 8A defense expert, ASW expert. Funnily enough, it looks pretty similar to the battleship skill. Do you see the difference between this and the battleship skill? What is, what is the biggest difference to this and the battleship skill? And they're not saying battleships are a handhold class. <laughs> this one costs 4 points. The BB one has 10% less on trip consumer preparation time. That's the difference. And it costs 2 points. It's kind of ridiculous, honestly. But hey. Um, where would you run a defense expert? Hmm. Maybe if you go for an A build on Golden Line. I don't really see where you would... Oh! Austin. Austin. Do you want to run a A defense and ASW expert on Austin? <laughs> because Austin has unlimited reload boosters. And you want to get them as quickly up upwards as, as you can again. And every bit of ASW plane or spider or... Any play in the game will help you to achieve that very quickly. So this one is a big pick on Austin and on something like if you go full AA, for example, on stuff like Golden Line. But otherwise, it's highly skippable and not really that important. Um, Yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video as well. This little overview of the cruiser skills, which one you can skip completely, which one you might take on specific ships. It really means a lot to me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. Out.